what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiringInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Darcy and Debbie of D2 Media. I will introduce them formally in a second. Um, and Darcy and Debbie, before I launch into it, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. So if you've checked out Inspired Insider, there's some really interesting ones. Um, you know, I had the co-founder of Pixar on. He talked about starting Pixar. He, taught, he had some Steve Jobs stories some George Lucas stories. But since this is an agency one, um, you should check out the one I did with Jason Swank. I've actually had him on twice. Uh, that was a great one. In one of his business, he talked about acquiring uh, agencies and what they do. And I had Todd Kasky on, who basically that's all he does. He basically helps sell agencies. And he talks about some of the biggest mistakes agencies make when they're selling. And so check that episode out as well. He also has a podcast called The Second Bite Podcast. So check all of that out in spurtinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that? We help you run your podcast. You know, for me, Darcy and Debbie, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way over the past decade to have the people uh, and their companies profile them and their thought leadership on my podcast so I can learn from them, so my audience can learn from them. And I can share them with the world. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. I've been saying it for over a decade. If you have a business, you have a podcast, period. Go to rise25.com, learn more. John, my business partner, I've been doing it for a long time. So feel free to ask us any questions that you want. Just contact us at rise25.com. I'm excited to share D2 Media. You can check them out at d2-media.com. I have Darcy Garbin, Debbie Pontera, the co-founder of D2 Media, and They've worked in media marketing for over 30 plus years, oh. <laughs> and I don't want to age both of you. Um, you look young, so but they hand select the best partners in business to provide an advertising and media dream team for clients. They have a, they've just a breadth of experience in you know some of the traditional marketing, which you know people think I love this, you know, radio, TV, direct mail, billboard, print, people think that stuff is dead. And I like that because then they're not going to use it. And then you have a competitive advantage <laughs> over them. So, um, and then from the digital end, they have a slew of partners they bring in depending on the expertise that their client needs. Uh, so I just want to, you know, welcome you. Thanks for coming on. Oh, Jeremy, thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. You know, I geek out on direct response marketing. I, I love it. So I wanted to start off with um, you know, from, we'll get to the, how you choose partners to bring in, but I want to start with some kind of walk me through a client and what that looks like, because you do a lot of different traditional media and some people like radio who listens to radio or TV or billboards. So I want to walk through, um, you know, paychecks and, and some of the things you do with paychecks. And let's start with that. I think that's a great one to start with. Yeah, for sure. So um, we had an opportunity last summer, you know, as everybody was talking about, you know, recruiting got really tough. They reached out to us. And um, the first campaign we started, we actually went to radio and we, we did. We, um, with Darcy's relationships with radio, she's got um, relationship with the most market. It's very easy for us to buy the whole market very quickly, which would take some agencies a lot of time. So we did a recruitment campaign across um I think it was like 15 markets and they actually saw a huge uptick in the first yeah. couple of months with radio. And to your point, right, it's still alive. People are still listening to it. You know, we're very specific about what we buy, you know, we, we buy only efficiently. Buy, yeah. We only buy, you know, when people are in their cars, you know, so we're very specific, but then, you know, your opportunity grew and we started to show results pretty quickly that we ended up getting more recruitment campaigns. And that's where we then started leaning on our digital partners because we needed to really, um, hone in on like IT people and really specific jobs. So that's where we moved from traditional to digital on that one. But um, we're big believers in, in all media, to be honest with you. But I think you, we'd say we're experts in traditional. So walk me through. So the goal of that, they wanted to hire more people with paychecks. Yeah. They had, what, they what's the call to action on a radio ad for something like that? 
So for that one, they, they actually put up um, a cash incentive. Yeah. So they offered people, I think um, it was up to like $4,500 mm -hmm. to take a job. So that wow. was really um, impactful for them. You know, they, they knew they needed to say something a little different to cut through the clutter. And they, it, we really worked with them and that yeah. became the offer. And that really resonated with people. So they saw a big uptick quickly with that. We also, we also did a little uh, billboard in a yep, couple markets and we put that message on there as well. That one we actually strategically put in front of their um, biggest competitor. competitor. So that one was kind of fun to kind of shop yeah. out where their competitors were, kind of hit that audience for uh, recruitment. Yeah. And, and to Debbie's point, the message, it has to be there. Doesn't matter how many times you hear something, if it if it's not interesting or it doesn't resonate with you, then it's just white noise. Yeah, I could see how when you have a compelling offer, you get a flood of responses. What are some of the mistakes people make with or maybe you made early on, like decades ago in <laughs> ra in radio? Yeah, I think some of the I, I will say is Debbie and I run into this um, a lot because we do do so much traditional and digital is you don't want to tell a client that their baby is ugly, <laughs> but most of the time they're too close to it. They're too close to their own messaging and their own creative. They can't be objective about it. And I think there's a fine line there where, you know, there's certain things that there has to be a compelling story and there has to be a call to action um, or there has to be a branding message. It, it, people especially more um, B2C, they need to know what their objective is with the creative and the spot and what they want people to do with it when they see it. I think sometimes they get lost in that part of it. We do a lot of lead gen. So for us, it's really important that you have a significant offer because all of your competitors have an offer. Why is yours different? And I need to know who it is you, to build that brand and that trust. I need to know what it is as soon as I hear it, as soon as I see it, where's your logo? Where's your music bed? Where's your frequency? Where's this great offer? And why, why am I looking for these offers? Where's your website? I don't see where your website is. I don't hear where your website. People are always going to go to your website first. And I think the mistakes you hear are some of the ones, I mean, they're, and, and I get it. Clients are trying to prove the ROI. So they want to do like, let's do a different number on each one of these messages to see which one works. And we all know they all, it's, you know, it's a, everything works together. It's not just one. Or they say, um, mention this ad and get 10% off, you know, like, come on, like, would you, I wouldn't do that. Right. No. And 10%, I mean, <laughs> right. Come on. <laughs> so we have to challenge our clients sometimes to just right. say like, you know, let's, let's think different. Let's think bigger. Um, there was a great offer we saw around the holiday with, you know, Amazon gift cards and a discount. You know, yep. People want instant, um, instant gratification. Right. And they want them, they want to, they want you to solve their problem and they, they want to make sure that they're going to get a great deal. Talk about um, that process for a second. And maybe you have to coach your clients through that process. And so you have paychecks. Was there an original offer, like offer as far as what they were going to offer their call to action on the table that you had to, did they come with, oh yeah, let's just offer 4,500 or did you have to have this brainstorming session and come to that particular offer? Yeah. That one we didn't have to. I mean, yeah. they knew that the challenge was there. We talked about an offer. Yeah. So that one was, that one right. I felt they stepped up right away. But I would say some other clients, you know, that we work with in the home improvement, we really have to push them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they're so focused on making the ad look great um, that they're forgetting that we need to make the phone ring and that's got to be an offer. So that's a lot of coaching there, Jeremy. And we, you know, sometimes we just have to be brutally honest with them. And Darcy's usually better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're both New Yorkers, right? The branding and the lead gen go hand in hand, right? Because people want to work with brands they trust. So no matter how great the offer is, if I've never heard of the company, probably not going to call, right? So they do go hand in hand and it can be a gray area for some clients because they just, they so want to be branded. Well, that's great, but your three big, biggest competitors are doing both. And you have so, to be willing to spend. I mean. As, you have to. there's the message but there's also the budget you yeah. really have to invest in leads we we tell all of our clients you know we're buying leads now for like august right we got to buy them now we have to invest in them and we push people you know that the budget has to be the right budget we're not going to overspend but we also will walk away if you're going to understand right because we can't we just can't move the needle i mean you have to certain region you, you can't start in may for your biggest season that's in may june and july that, that just doesn't work 
So, and again, to Debbie's point, you have to be willing to spend the money. And I think that's what makes us different too, is because we buy so many different types of media. We can say if a client has three, $400,000, we can say, okay, well, this is where your frequency needs to be. This is where you need to be placed. Maybe you can't be on radio, TV, print, billboard. Like you're not going to be everywhere because we're not going to just like throw it at a wall and hope something sticks to be very strategic about someone's budget. That's their money. And maybe you're in one spot, maybe you're in two spots, but they want it. A lot of clients want to see that themselves everywhere. Um, I always laugh and tell Debbie in 2021, I bought more billboards than I have in my whole career. <laughs> I literally bought more billboards than I have. Why is that? I, I have no idea other than maybe people were driving more. People wanted to be seen more. And, and I love, I'm a very big fan of static boards as opposed to digital boards. And all of a sudden, everyone who wanted to do digital now wanted to do static boards. Too. Why? Why do you like static over digital? I like because it rotates. Digital. I don't like the rotation. Number one, I, what I what, here's here's what I like. So that's easier to say. What I do like is there's no cost for production. Right? It's super super easy. You can get on within an hour. Right? You can change it out every week if you want. No cost. You have a static vinyl board. It can get costly, right? So you, you've got to do that production. You've got to wait for it to put up. We just had a big client that was supposed to start. There was a windstorm for three days. They were seven days behind their start date because any contract has right. to put, you know, inclement weather and whatnot. So um, for me, I like to keep driving and get the impression. I want my clients to only, I don't want them to be fighting anybody up there. You know, there's, there's eight advertisers with eight seconds. I could drive by there 10 times. How many times am I going to see, you know, your ad. So do you like, so the, you like the digital billboards more? No, no. I like the static. Static. Okay. I don't want to fight for anyone's attention. So she was just saying there's some benefits to the digital, but at the end of the day, if you've got the budget for the creative, we would got recommend it. you, you, you command the board a hundred percent. You own that, you own that mark. Yeah. Got yeah. It. I mean, you're already fighting for, for to break through this clutter with everything that you do, whether it's radio, TV, print, direct mail, stream, like we're inundated. I mean, I remember when I first started, you had to touch somebody two or three times for them to retain your message. What is it now? Like 10? Do you know how costly that is? And now you're going to put yourself into a rotation on a board where you're fighting seven other advertisers on your board. Yeah. If you have the budget on it, on your board. So with paychecks, back to paychecks, so radio, and you said that you did other traditional we media with them. Well. Yep. And we're doing some, and we're doing digital, digital right now. Yep. Yep. And we're all, we're only working with recruitment end. Yep. So recruitment's big, right? Yeah, right now in a lot of different companies. So um, talk about Monroe uh, for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just like everyone else, there there's supply issues. Monroe is like an auto for people who don't know. It's like a it's, auto it's service. And tire. Auto service. Yes, yes, yes. Monroe Corporation is Monroe Muffler, Mr. Tire, Tread Quarters, um, Ken Ken Towery it encompasses tire warehouse. It encompasses lots of tires. Lots of <laughs> lots of tire and, and and automotive service. And um obviously with COVID, people weren't driving. So when people aren't driving, they don't have to have their car serviced. And then you have shortages on, on supplies. And then you have a labor shortage. So we pushed it a recruitment and we did 100% radio. Wow. And great so. Response. And they saw a great response too, right? They saw great response in certain markets. Other markets were obviously a little bit lower, but you know, to Debbie's point earlier, when you have a budget, the difference between being in a market like Rochester and Buffalo versus being in a market like Orlando, Florida, it makes a difference. You know, there's a, there's a big cost discrepancy there. So as far as the offer for that, so I could see how paychecks, you're going to pay me $4,500. I'd call. I'm, I'm not even looking for a job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what, what is a type of offer you have to um, look at with, with something like Monroe? So that was, that's a good question. So for them, you know, obviously it's usually very entry level. They're looking for technicians. That's an easy job to train, right? So there's um, interviews Saturday and Sunday, one to four. So it's a designated time for them to come in. They know they're going to get an interview. 
Um, if they sign you, it's a thousand dollar signing bonus. Those signing bonuses, they really work. They work. Um, pay training, healthcare, benefits. Those are all very important things. And they really touched on that person entering that line of work. What about, and I would like to talk about some of the other traditional, um, you mentioned billboards. What are some mistakes people make <clears throat> with billboards, especially let's say the vinyl, like you put it up there, like you better get it right because, yeah. you know, you don't well, want to be taking that thing down. Well, people are usually driving by a billboard somewhere between 45 and 65 miles an hour. So too many words is everyone's favorite thing. And the color, like we have a client and, and their board is too white. In the winter. In the I winter get, on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's white. It's beautiful. The creative is beautiful, but I'm not sure that you actually can really appreciate it because it's just, it's just so murky. Um, I think it's really important to have a message that if I'm driving by it six times a week, I know exactly what it is. What's your tag? What's your phone number? What's your website? That's it. Are there any companies you feel like should not be types of companies that should not be doing billboard? You know, like when I drive on the highway, I see lots of law firms. Yes, you do. Advertising. Lots of heads, and, right? They all have their head up there. Yeah. Yes. Um, are there any types of industries or maybe let's talk about the law firm for a second. You probably drive through a lot of billboards. You're like, oh, they, they need to do X, Y, Z. What, what do you see with law firms and how they should improve their billboards? Well, I think the first thing is like, get your picture off of there because it's, it's, it's quirky, mm -hmm. right? Like it, it's just, it's a hard sell. It's an ambulance chaser kind of thing. I don't care how attractive you are. People just don't like it. And it does seem like that, like make it branding, make that, what, what, do, what do you, what's your value to me? Why should I call you? Well, you definitely need a catchy number too, right? I mean, yes. I think that's important in that space, right? So you gotta, you gotta pay for the number that's going to resonate because I'm going fast. But I also think that billboard has to work with other mediums. You can't just buy it specifically. So, right. you know, so I think it's just, um, yeah, I definitely think they should get their, their heads off of there. I think there's mm -hmm. way too many heads on the billboard. When you say that, that they should work with other mediums, um, what do you mean by that? So they have billboard and then do you- Radio, TV, digital, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it shouldn't work yeah. alone. News so, apps, yeah. Yeah, digital. I mean, there's so many things that- They're big broadcast bands. I mean, I mean, obviously for attorneys, broadcast is great. Um, so if you can really buy a very, very heavy broadcast schedule for the reach, you know, and the frequency, and also have the billboard. I mean, they're going to work together like the one-two punch. And then obviously we always allocate money for digital. So. And then, you know, what about, you mentioned the number. Should someone have or not have a website or something like that on the billboard? Is it? Is it? They absolutely should have their website. Yeah. They should have their website on everything that's touched by anyone who could be a potential client. Agreed. And then. Again, that goes back to. They're always going to check out your website before they pick up the phone and call you. Which we check out yours and I'm sure you check that out. <laughs> of course, but, but that's the way the world is right now. You want to check them out before you make that phone call. So years ago, when you'd walk into a place of business and you had a beautiful reception area, your website should be your beautiful reception area. It is the first thing people will learn about you. Yep. And then from a broadcast standpoint, like for some people that also seems like a black box, like this seems complicated. I've never done this before. It yeah. seems expensive. What are some things you want to tell people about actual um, broadcast media? Yeah, I mean, I think with broadcast, because there is so much clutter, you have to be very efficient. That's really the most important thing. And you just, you can't be everywhere unless you have a significant budget. You have to, you know, and not everybody can be on 12 months a year. Not everybody can be on every week of the year. I mean, you have to be strategic. You have to know, again, know, know what your goals are. What, what are you trying to accomplish with this campaign? And there's, you know, obviously we like 15 second messages, right? So we can, frequency. we can buy 15, uh, 15 second messages, commercials cheaper than you can a 30, right? So the, we can go after it that way. So we do recommend that they have shorter length commercials. And if they can create some fives and tens, 
there's some great um, sponsorships that broadcast offers with the shorter units. So that's impactful with a really good 15. But back to the creative, you got to get your message across very efficiently in a 15. Um, and we work really hard on that because that, that really works when you get that right. And the other thing is if you can be flexible and when you're going to run, right? Yeah. I mean, automotive typically buys the, the last two weeks of the month. That's when their co-op comes out. They own the TV station. So if you can be more flexible, you know, we can get more efficient in the first couple of weeks of the month. And that's mm -hmm. been very effective as well. So. And then, you know, on the home improvement path, um, talk about Wonder Windows. Um, so this was a client that I think in the beginning, we didn't know if he even liked us. Oh, right. And he was our first client. No, he was our second Same client time. together. We were like, I don't know if he likes us, but we need the business. We're going to make this work. And we went, he, <laughs> he was, um, he'd been in on one market for a long time and he was trying to break it into the other market. And um, so we helped him in Buffalo, New York. And of course we were excited. We had a great strategy. We laid it out. We went to town. We went to all the managers to get the best program we could for him. And then, of course, um, COVID hit. So we were like, oh, right. So, but we actually, um, we convinced them to stay on. We went to the stations and we asked them, you know, if they would give us three for one. We stayed on because a lot of advertisers yeah, were pulling, pulling off, off very quickly. And um, we got him an amazing deal to stay on. And he, he did it. He listened to us and he grew his business in the first part of COVID, you know, before Home Improvement was taking off when people were home watching television 24 seven and he grew his market share very quickly with us going out on a limb and um, offering him a deal to stay on and it worked. And um, I think he actually learning to love us, right? He, I think he does love us. He gave us a sweatshirt. <laughs> Talk about negotiation because you have buying power, right? Cause you go yeah. with a lot of clients to these um, whether it's radio, TV, how do you, properly negotiate with these people so that you know you're getting your clients a good deal but you have a long-lasting relationship with the uh, with the company i think that's, right. that's really important what you said at the end is um you have it has to start and end with respect right we want an amazing deal we need it to run we need it to run in the right day parts um but we also want to give them a lot of money we're for some broadcasts can sometimes be our biggest partner on some of our clients um so we really negotiate that. I guess we, I guess I've priced TV and radio stations for many years. So I kind of get how to, where they, where they're, they're, they're sitting in their seats and how they do it. So we really work with them to get the best deal for the budget and we partner with them. And I think we treat them with respect. I mean, I think you, we call them when it's not working and ask for help. We, if we have more money, we give it to them. So we really work as a team. I really believe that our partners are so important to our success and our clients' success. We really do work as a team. The difference between maybe a client who has a half a million dollar budget, I'm sure they're getting great rates, but Debbie and I spend millions of dollars. So I assure you we're getting better rates, right? I mean, that's just, that's the way the world works. And I think that's one of the reasons that you use us. And also for anyone who really does try to do their own media, they have multiple reps calling, they have multiple invoices that they have to reconcile every month. And we streamline that, we do all of that for them. We do co-op, we put it in a neat package for them and we run everything. And we audit it, we ask for made yeah. goods. I mean, something runs wrong, we're the first one to ask for more and then we just make sure we're, but to your point, it's gotta work for the client and it's gotta work for the, the media company. Correct. You know, you get a lot of, again, experts in traditional, you get a lot of people asking, you know, I want digital, I want paid ads, and you made a conscious choice just to stick with traditional. I want to talk about how you choose partners, but let's start there. You know, you go, hey, we could build out this team and do digital. What made you decide just to stick with traditional and form partnerships instead of building it out yourself? Well, our background is traditional and it's something we're still very passionate about and, and it does work, and it, but it works even better with digital, right? They complement each other. It, it's not one or the other, but as far as how we choose partners, I think we've, we've made a lot of mistakes, especially in the first few months. And then with COVID, you know, you really learn who your partners are. And I think that's super important because we we got even more aggressive for our clients and lean and mean. We need partners who were doing the same. So we also, I think, we, we need partners who are relationship-driven like we are. 
we all have to have the same core values to be able to work together as a team, especially the way that our company is set up where we do create a dream team for you and you're not on our payroll, you are your own separate company. So I think that's really important that we all feel very strongly about our clients and their success. So I think that's where we learned very quickly that even the most successful companies that we talk to were not good fits for us. Yeah. Talk about a red flag because you say relationship driven. I, I, you know, if you ask a company, are you relationship driven? Probably a hundred percent will probably say yes. But what's a red flag that you see that you're like, well, we got to steer away uh-huh. from this type of partnership. I think okay. Debbie and I can both agree wholeheartedly that when you come to our company, you deal with Debbie and I, we don't pass you off to anyone. When we work with a radio or TV or anyone, we always go to the manager when we've worked with certain companies, as soon as we start doing business with them, they hand us a junior AE. <laughs> I, it's not my job to train anyone. And it's not that I don't want to help, but I have clients that need the best of the best. And they're the, the younger people, they struggle with picking up the phone. Yeah. They struggle with communication. They struggle with, with understanding how important that relationship really is. There's, you can do the best job in the world, but if you're not communicating, that's a huge issue. And that's why we prefer to just use managers because they're usually old school like us. Mm-hmm. We pick up the phone, we talk. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Yeah, so I guess the point, your point is that we don't want to be then turned over to the brand new person. Right. So then we have to train them. So that's, I cannot train a TV rep, a radio rep, or, right. a, or a digital rep. You know, I want somebody who is going to be as, um, good in front of the client as we're going to be. Yeah. So I have one last question for you both, but before I ask it, I want to point people towards D2, that's the number two, dash media.com. Learn more about what they're, you know, Darcy and Debbie are working on over there. And um, I think, and I won't put you on the spot, but like, I think there's, there's always different partnerships you guys are forming with companies. So if you are um, an agent's digital agency and, um contact them because they're always looking for great partners. Um, my last question for both of you is, um, you know, you both have a lot of experience. Uh, how did you meet as far as co- decided yeah. coming together as, as partners? Cause that's a big decision. Well, Debbie and I worked together for many years. She was, you know, the manager of radio and TV stations and, and I had my own agency. So we just, we, we started off as I was her client and we became really good friends and she had a, a, we both had boys at the same time. And we always just for what, 20 years, we're like, we should just do something together. Because the one thing that I loved about Debbie was she was so client and relationship driven, which is really what like, I, we were like magnets to that, right? So we always talked about it. She was corporate America. I have no interest in that. And so we weren't really sure how that meeting of that mind was going to go. And then one day, we were just like, do you want to do it? She's like, I'm going to do it. And so she quit her job and she jumped in. And then four months later, COVID hit. (laughs) And we always say, if we can make it through COVID and actually in our first year, make it successful, then the sky's the limit for us. Agreed. We're a great team. Yeah. Yeah. So we started out as friends and business partners and it's been a good ride. I think we both know what we're good at and we try to just stay in our own lanes. Yeah. It really worked. Yep. We both bring very different things to the table, which is great because we don't need somebody, we don't need two people doing the exact same thing. Love it. I want to be the first one to thank you both. Check out d2-media.com. Check out Rise25. Check out more episodes on inspiredinsider.com. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy. Thank you for having us on. Thanks, everyone. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.